The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit is set to hear an argument on the Arizona's uh, controversial immigration law, otherwise known as SB 1070. What are the key points in this, in this case? The current procedural posture is that the district court in Arizona uh, temporarily enjoined enforcement of the law, or at least certain provisions of the law. And the main argument on the merits is that the federal government was preempted in its power to enforce the immigration laws. What that means is that there are certain areas of law that only the federal government uh, can legislate and ultimately enforce. And here they're arguing that the state of Arizona overstepped its boundaries as a state and actively enforces or even sometimes counteracts uh, federal enforcement of the immigration law. And that's really what the issue is. So this question here is really not one on the merits yet, it's one on the injunction initially, namely whether the district court was correct in issuing a stop to the enforcement of the law or certain provisions of the law to be accurate. And the argument of the district court was that on the merits, the federal government is more likely than not uh, to win the argument. And the, federal, the district court will have to hear the merits argument uh, next. That's really the big step. And that then will surely be appealed to the Ninth Circuit. And everyone expects that case to go to the United States Supreme Court, assuming that the Supreme Court will hear the argument on it. Now, substantively, some of the big issues about the Arizona law is whether the Arizona police must uh, ask for immigration papers every time they are um, stopping someone or arresting somebody. Another question um, is whether they can, in fact, prohibit undocumented workers uh, from soliciting work or um, working. Those are the types of questions that have come in conjunction with that law, or whether that's all the purview of the federal government. And what is your scholarly opinion, both on the law and how the courts ultimately should decide on it? The way in which the Federal Court of Appeals have approached this, um, I do believe that the district court is correct that there is a high likelihood that ultimately the federal government will win. I think the overall problem in the immigration area is that it's really a political legal issue rather than just a legal issue. You have huge ramifications for the country, and you still have the old question that the states are raising, which is why is the federal government not enforcing immigration laws? The problem is that you have a very complicated set of laws that really only specialists understand at this point, which is why you don't want state police, for example, to enforce it, because it is too complicated to do so. Now, on the other hand, you don't have the resources to enforce the law fully. So what we're doing is we're doing um, pinpointed enforcement in some parts of the country more than in others, for example, against certain groups more than against others. And that, of course, causes resentment in the general population, especially in a time of recession where you have the argument that it's the undocumented who are taking jobs from people who are legally in the country and who are United States citizens. And how do uh, proposed laws in states like Arizona impact non-border states, such as New York? Well, one of the questions was uh, what the impact would be. And the argument um, by the state of Arizona was that really they don't want to preempt federal law. What they want is for people to leave Arizona and theoretically go back to their home country. The reality is that people will probably not go back to their home country for economic reasons, but instead move to other um, states and New York undeniably is one of the big immigration states because one of the things you want to look for with immigration is where are their networks um, for the immigrants family relatives ethnic groups and where are their jobs and I think those are the two draws generally um, for immigrants whether documented or undocumented um, doesn't matter so as long as the state of New York provides work uh, I think the assumption is that more immigrants uh, might be coming to New York. And why do you think the federal government hasn't tackled uh, immigration reform? I think both major parties are internally split on the issue. Um, you have within the Republican Party a group that is generally um, restrictionist, inclined towards very limited immigration, if any, at all. On the other hand, you have a large group, especially um, a business group, that is very much pro-immigration. Of course, would probably like to see it um, possibly controlled or streamlined in uh, more effective ways. Uh, but some of them are even probably 
uh, pro-open borders. On the other hand, within the Democratic Party, um, you have also had traditionally a restrictionist group, a group that's largely concerned about employment for United States citizens. Unions used to be in that group, though they have now um, switched because they have unionized so many groups of immigrants. And then you have a very um, strong and vocal group in the Democratic Party um, that is clearly very much pro-immigration and very much pro-legalization as well. And that's really the next uh, great battleground, I think, on the immigration front. What will legalization, what forms will legalization um, take? You see this now also reflected in the debate over does the 14th Amendment really grant uh, birthright citizenship? And you see it reflected in the DREAM Act, which raises the question whether undocumented children can, through military service or education, ultimately become United States citizens.